Hey, what's up, mortals? It's me, Robert Ramirez, a.k.a. Rars Revenge here. Welcome back to part three of What If All Might Died Before Passing On One For All. Just wanted to greet you guys before we get back into this story. So sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so we begin. Them, just the thought of the possibility of him being back sent another shiver down Power Loader's spine. If support items getting broken during use is scary, then One For All being back was a horror movie come to life. Or maybe scarier. As the principal and him ran to the faculty room, he had realized that the principal's cheeky and signature grin was not even flattering. He had thought to himself that maybe this was a result of experience, trying to be positive despite the lack of it already happening. As they entered the said room, they were met with the other teachers huddled in front of Eraserhead's desk. They looked shocked, grief, disbelief, and even anger on their faces came noticeable. We just received news about him. Midnight stated after she took notice of the principal's presence. The police department has contacted us about it already. We asked for them to keep it private to avoid further worry within the people. But the news and tabloids are already spreading it. She continued, Namori letting out a sigh after. Just as they feared, as much as the heroes worked hard to bring back the atmosphere of peace for everyone, the fear rooted deep in their hearts was still growing. This new information about the possible resurface of All for One only added fuel to the fire. Life has been hard for everyone even the heroes. The fear of having the strongest villain they could possibly ever encounter appear out of nowhere and take their lives scared them deeply, whether they admit it or not. The new generation of heroes in training, not only those under UA high school, but also those in other schools hope to be the new symbol of peace. Everyone trained and fought with the thought of being the one to bring back the smiles and hopes of everyone. Yet none have succeeded in five years ever since All Might's passing. There have been many instances as to when the villains would pretend to be the villain they all feared. They would kill almost all innocents that their eyesight could reach. Everyone's cries were, Where are the heroes? And, We're all doomed! Not knowing none was brave enough to face anyone who claimed to be him. The supposed brave heroes were scared, and they did not try to hide it even to themselves, going against someone without knowing anything about them besides knowing that this person defeated the strongest man they knew was something impossible. Or so they said. As I was scratched at the back of his head, as he watched the videos circulating around social media, his usual sleepy and tired expression still present, how inconvenient. He mumbled, continuing after, He really resurfaced, huh? Just when our defenses are weak and lacking, he knows the proper timing to do these attacks. That's unfortunate for us, yo! You pointing that out was unnecessary. Aizawa answered back, letting out a yawn before assessing the video again. Despite his sleepy eyes and demeanor, he was more than focused compared to anyone in the room. Did no one else notice this? He placed a finger on the screen of the desktop, moving his face closer as the other teachers did the same. That person definitely doesn't look like all for one. If we base it on files and descriptions given to us. Does it mean that it was all a false alarm? President Mike asked after breaking the seconds of silence, discreetly letting out a sigh of relief. An attack as disastrous as that could possibly be just a false alarm. I'd rather have that guy back rather than a new villain causing such damage. The heroine pointed out, the look on her face showing nothing but worry. If indeed All for One was making a move, they'd be easily beaten without doubt. They were under trained for such a catastrophe, and they were outnumbered powered-wise. And if it really wasn't the said enemy shown in the video, then they had to watch out for someone who could disintegrate such a wide ground within a single touch. Everybody had a bad feeling about it, yet no one dared to speak anymore. Hizashi's expression seemed relief, yet scared. Aizawa was from sleepy to somehow alarmed, and Nomori just as worried and concerned. The ongoing silence was finally broken as a young man in a detective coat entered the room. Detective Naomasa. Principal Nezu greeted in his usual tone, jumping off the Aizawa's table to greet the tall man and welcome him in. Hello, Principal Nezu. I didn't mean to interrupt. He bowed his head toward the rodent, before greeting the others, taking out a small notebook out of his pocket after. It wasn't new to them to have a detective present in their school, but having him arrive exactly when the news of his return spreading was already enough of a statement for everyone who saw him travel here. All of them were scared, possibly even mortified by the thought, if the information about the said detective going to the home of heroes and the heroes in training alike during a scare, then that'd be chaos. It seems that everyone here is already aware about the situation. He speaks while looking through his notebook, starting to discuss the notes taken by him. The news on the internet is going frantic. No one knows what is real and what is not. If I'm to be honest, no one does. But I'm not here for nothing. 
I'm here to fill everyone up on the current situation and information. That's the least the police force can do. As the detective continued speaking, he showed the teachers present his notes taken. I don't know if you have noticed it, but the videos taken by choppers and reporters on their helicopters are completely covered in dust and puffs of smoke. If you once again look closely by the lower left corner, you'll see a man walk out of the view of the cameras. It was obviously intentional. So I, or we believe, he wanted his name or his presence to be known just as well. He explained after moving toward the desktop monitor that he had the video paused. Moving away after pointing it out, we did realize it even if you didn't point it out. Wouldn't that information mean that this was all just a false alarm? No appearance of the enemy anywhere. Possibly just another man seeking attention. Azawa replied while emitting another yawn, whispering to himself after about a lack of coffee for himself. It would be better if it was just all like that. Another false alarm would have been easier to handle for the most part. But that's not what our sources and informants say. His name is Shigaraki Tamura, and that's all we know about him. All rumors of him being connected to All for One is highly suggested to be ignored. But I personally can't myself. Naomasa had no shame in admitting his belief in contrary to what the informant said. His expression changing at his own confession. I can't fathom accepting the idea that this one is just another fake. Everyone's so afraid of the outcome of his return that they try to live in this fake sense of security. And I don't want to be one of them. The others were quiet as they let the man continue on speaking, his words hitting some sort of sore spot of theirs that they've been deliberately trying to ignore. I don't want to start anything. The detective uttered after the deafening silence between all of them, his head hung low. All I want is everybody to be ready for what is to come, and that we do not turn a blind eye on it. We cannot lose. We already lost against him, and we suffered a bigger loss when he killed the symbol. It felt new to all of them to be given a dressing down by a police officer, but they were not dense enough to not believe every word he had uttered. He was right in every way possible. Once again, thinking that they can handle such a threat was dangerous. And that's what brought them to the death of their hero. They depended on All Might greatly. All throughout his era, everyone thought he was unbeatable. But they have been proven wrong in the cruelest and most gruesome way that they could ever have thought of. Rising up from the soil of his grave was hard. Rising up to his power and courage was even harder. They barely survive these days as more villains appear. And crime rates keep climbing up the charts. They were alive, yet barely breathing. We don't really have a choice here now, do we? Aizawa muttered in his raspy voice before taking a sip of his coffee, eyes moving toward the direction of Cement Toss, who had spoken up for the first time since he arrived back in the faculty room. We are the future of this country, and of this world. We cannot let them win again. We are their current and only hope, so we have no choice but to fight. We chose this job, so the best we could do is actually do it. Everyone nodded in agreement to his Cement Toss statement. Their heads hung low in shame as they thought of how they've been unconsciously afraid of doing the job they claim to love. What is left for us to do besides that? I guess we really are our own generation's heroes, and the kids that we train are their own heroes. Midnight swirled around her whip to try to show she was ready for any fight that may come knocking on their front doors. As everyone made their own self-reflection in their minds, Power Lord looked down on the principal, who had been quiet all this time since the detective arrived, his whiskery smile not even wavering for a bit. As their meeting in the faculty room was dismissed, and the detective going back to the department, Power Loader followed his instinct and followed Principal Nazu secretly. Please prove my suspicion incorrect, Principal. He whispered to himself as he followed Nazu quietly. Thank you all for indulging yourself in this story thus far. Hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts and lore of wide variety of animes. It's sure to expand your weed knowledge for all kinds of series guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What If. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. I'd like to let you all know that on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description down below. If perhaps you are interested in what we do here at WTC, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being, we only accept members 16 and older to join our crew. You can find us on Discord, which can be located in the description down below. Our Discord is an all-around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or looking to join a band of misfits. All you gotta do is hit up a recruitment server and sign up for whichever category of work that fulfills your interests. We're always looking for more members to join us. 
Well, that's it from us for today's videos. So, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.